video I made about a month back about the top 10 most used weapons inside of Destiny's PvE at the time. I ended up using data from Destiny Tracker and we went over the list from 10 to 1 while also explaining why certain weapons were as popular as they were and discussing god rolls. Actually taking a look at it now, that video has 110,000 views. Nice. Anyways, I thought that video was a ton of fun to make, but it had one problem. It was going over the top most used PvE weapons, popularity, not the top best, and that's what today's video is going to be all about. Today we're going to be discussing the top 10 best PvE legendary weapons inside of Destiny 2, and as stated in the title, this is from an in-game player's perspective, so I may not feature weapons that some of you absolutely adore, or even I absolutely adore, because they don't really stack up all that well in high-end content. We're going to be going over my personal picks from 10 to 1, while also discussing how you can farm and obtain the weapons I mention, as well as going over the god rolls so that you know what to look out for when grinding these guns. I'll also occasionally feature multiple weapons in one spot, as some weapons are so similar that I feel as though they can hold a space together. Now, before we jump into it, this video took absolute ages to make. So if you enjoy the video today, definitely feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as I'd absolutely love to have you here. Also, feel free to drop a comment below of your own personal top 10 as I read my comments every single day. And maybe, just maybe, I might be judgmental of you in the comment section. But anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's talk about our 10th best PvE weapon on the list. And honestly, I'm just gonna have to give this one to Fatebringer from the Vault of Glass. When it comes to Fatebringer, you're in either one of two camps. You think it's overrated as hell, or you absolutely love it. I'm in the camp of absolutely loving it, and I'll tell you why. Fatebringer to me is what every hand cannon should aspire to be. It's got fantastic base stats, top tier perks in every column, and even has an adept version if you're willing to go through the slog fest that is Master VOG. When it comes to perks on Fatebringer, you have a ton of really good and fun options. First up, if a weapon has explosive payload on it, I'm instantly a massive fan, and that's exactly what this weapon has in the third perk column. Explosive payload is just so damn good that it gives a flat 11% damage buff to literally every precision shot you hit, and a 15% to the body. If you're not rocking explosive payload, you can also have fun options like rewind rounds that give great sustained damage, and it makes you feel like you're never running out of bullets. In the last perk column, we got things like kill clip for 30% extra damage after a kill and reload, frenzy for a flat 15% as long as you're just in combat, and firefly for solar damage explosion on headshot kills, and having that tied to a kinetic weapon is pretty sick overall, as it can pop solar shields and can make warmind cells with mods like Wrath of Rasputin. All in all, the reason I feature Fatebringer at number 10 is because I almost always have this weapon equipped at all times. Because of it having explosive payload, it makes for a great option in high-end content like GMs, thanks to less damage falloff and easier stuns on overload champions. Frenzy is also a fantastic perk that stacks with explosive rounds, so I can almost have the equivalent of Kill Clip's damage constantly enabled just by being inside of combat. Fatebringer is one of Destiny's best hand cannons, and although there's a hand cannon that I rank much higher than this later on the list, Fatebringer is a top tier choice among players at high end content, and any content for that matter. It's definitely deserving of a spot on the list, so with that said, let's go ahead and move on over to number 9. Now, here at number 9, we got our favorite spinny spinny chop chop, and that's the Fallen Guillotine from Season of Arrivals. Let's talk a bit about Spinny Boy. Now, you can get Fallen Guillotine from the World Loot Pool, and it's basically as close as you'll get to having a legendary sword feel exotic. It's just that damn good. Guillotine provides a disgusting amount of burst damage when needed, and is an excellent choice for raids like Last Wish, as well as dungeons like Pit of Heresy with its final boss. Fallen Guillotine is a really good sword overall. Like, really good. Practically too good because almost every single sword that releases up into this point has automatically been disregarded as guillotine is just that much better thanks to its frame and perk selection. Taking a look at the perks, you either want Jagged or Honed Edge in the first column, Swordmaster's Guard in the second, Relentless Strikes in the third, and Whirlwind Blade in the fourth. 
there's really no surprise that Guillotine is on this list. It's the pinnacle of all legendary swords in the game, and quite literally the benchmark by which all of them are judged. It's a pretty good weapon, so I had to slap it on the list, and with that being said, let's go ahead and segue on over to number 8. Now, do y'all smell that? You know, it smells like one of the sole reasons that heavy grenade launchers are generally completely worthless in the meta right now. It smells a little bit like, um, ah yes, Salvager's Salvo. Sometimes I get people in my comments saying, Joey, why don't you like this heavy grenade launcher? It rolls with clown cartridge and chain reaction, it absolutely destroys ads, it's amazing. Let me put it like this, why use heavy ammo for ad clear when it's much rare and take up slot for anarchy, when you can instead use special ammo, which is common, and better for ad clear. You see where I'm going with this? Salvager Salvo can be gotten as a ritual weapon quest from the gunsmith, and it just absolutely slaps. Everything about this weapon just spells chaos. It's a lightweight frame GL, literally the best archetype in the game. It has Ambitious Assassin as a perk for double the rounds following a reload after kill. On top of Chain Reaction, I mean, do I really need to say more about the topic? Running this bad boy in Vault of Glass, especially during Confluxes or Oracles, just wipes the floor with any ads that decide to show up. I mean, honestly, outside of GMs and Master Raids, this is a universal top pick for everybody for just about anything. I mean, why would you even bother at the end of the day with using heavy ammo for something that this weapon can do with special ammo? And special ammo is a lot more common, so it kind of makes sense to run this bad boy instead of that entire other section of weapon. Salvager Salvo is in a league of its own. It's a really good weapon, and it's pretty nasty. I put it in number 8. Let's go ahead and move on over to number 7. Now next up here at number 7, we have my literal favorite heavy weapon in the game right now. The Royal Entry Rocket Launcher. Now, this bad boy can be gotten from looting the chest at the end of Vanguard Strikes, and man, oh man, is it worth farming out a good one of these. Ever since Season of the Chosen, rocket launchers have been such a vibe to use whenever it comes to burst damage on targets. They're especially useful when trying to tank the health bars of champions, but just pray that they're not anti-barrier champions. Oh, I love... When my rocket doinks off a shield, man, it makes me feel powerful. <laughs> Anti-barrier rocket. <laughs> Motherfucker! Dude! Please! Thanks to Chosen's flat damage buff, as well as perks like Lasting Impression combined with auto-loading on a royal entry, you have yourself a recipe for greatness. But why on royal entry specifically? What makes it so damn good compared to other rockets with the same perks? Well, Royal Entry has the benefit of being a precision frame rocket launcher, meaning that it has built-in tracking to the rockets that you shoot. I myself find this to be a godsend as a PC player, and I can only imagine what you controller players out there think about it. Just look at how little effort I need to put in to shoot Cargan from afar inside this GM Nightfall. I'm getting off so much damage here without the need of getting close and putting myself in danger, or chaotically guessing where she'll place herself next so I can not miss my next shot. Now, you might be asking yourself, well that's cool and all, but aggressive frame rockets say they deal high damage with higher recoil. Wouldn't that mean that a rocket like Hezen Vengeance would deal more damage? Uh, the wording on rockets is a bit deceitful, honestly, and I didn't know this up until, you know, a few months ago, but so a bit of knowledge for those of you guys that didn't know, all rockets deal the same amount of damage regardless of their archetype. This means that in their current state, precision frames are by far the best when it comes to rockets because they have built in tracking with literally zero of the negatives. Now, I'm not saying ignore other rocket launchers. This brings me to a bit of an honorable mention here, the Vault of Glasses has in Vengeance, as there are some rockets outside of this archetype that bring good things to the table. In Hezen's case, it brings solar to the table, as well as having the unique ability to roll overflow for those that want it. Combine this with the fact that you can get an adept version that has better stats and, you know, adept mods, and you know, you'll quickly see that Hezen is the complete package, but why put Royal Entry ahead of Hezen? Well, you can't deal damage if you're missing your shots, and I'm absolutely dog shit at the game, so <laughs> Moving on over to number 6, we have ourselves two weapons that absolutely demolish inside of Grandmaster and Master Raid content, and those two are the Nightwatch and the Trusty Scout Rifles. 
Starting off with the Night Watch, this weapon is pretty much my go-to currently for GM content. It's obtainable through the World Loot Pool, but also from the New Light Quests. In its New Light Quest role, which drops at the end of a quest, Overflow Explosive Payload is just too good to not use inside of Grandmasters. You get the benefit of long range thanks to it being a scout, a flat damage boost thanks to explosive payload, and a massive magazine to help it ticking down the health bars of champions thanks to overflow. It also being at 200 rounds per minute, it just feels like an excellent weapon to fire, and the scope that it has makes it feel really snappy when firing on enemies from far away. Now of course next up we have the trustee which I will admit I heavily slept on in my raid tier list video a while back. I actually think it's much better than Vision of Confluence now to be honest with you thanks to my friend Finris. Now trustee is a fully automatic scout rifle that's solar element and features really good perks. With a role like extended mag, reconstruction, and redirection, you will absolutely dominate inside of the GM playlist. Reconstruction is a perk that'll passively load your weapon as time goes on, up to twice the original mag size, and combining this with extended mag gives you the potential for 40 rounds in a magazine at a time. Redirection is a perk that'll help you out greatly when it comes to damaging champions, as dealing damage to any normal adds will give you stacks of redirection, and when shooting more beefy enemies like champions, you use up these stacks per shot in exchange for some serious damage increase to your shots overall. Now overall, these are some really good weapons that have some really good roles that work out really well in high-end content. People laugh at scouts nowadays, but I feel as though they forget just how good they are, at least when using the right ones for the right situations. Now, moving on, here at number 5, we have got two absolute banger weapons inside of PvE, the Ikelos and the Seraph SMGs. And if you're wanting to get your hands on either of them, they both drop from the world loot pool. Now, when it comes to primaries and destiny PvE, SMGs pretty much run the show in just about every piece of content. Besides maybe GMs and Master Raids, it's you normally want to keep your distance from enemies. Regardless though, not only are these guns part of a meta weapon type, and not only do they have really good perks to go along with that, but they also intrinsically make Warmind Cells as long as you have at least one singular Warmind Cell mod on your armor at any given time. Kill enemies how you normally would and just watch them drop mini nukes before your very eyes. This isn't anything like having Wrath of Rasputin equipped and having solar splash damage from very specific weapons or perks cause these cells to spawn. This is just a normal thing for these two weapons that combined with them being SMGs is just destruction waiting to happen. Taking a look at the roles, we have my personal favorite role for the Ikelos being Subsistence Vorpal, but you also have good options like Threat Detector as well as Disruption Breaker Surrounded. And taking a look at the Seraph SMG, we have things like Ambitious Assassin, Fourth Time to Charm, and either Feeding Frenzy or Vorpal to pair along with those. All in all, you take a meta weapon type, give it good perks, give it the ability to nuke anything at any time, and you have yourself one of the strongest weapons Destiny has to offer. I featured both the Ikelos as well as the Seraph, as I know some people's personal tastes differ, but for me personally, Ikelos having subsistence synergizes very well with Warmind Cells, as just when I'm about to run out of ammo, I kill an enemy, get ammo back in my mag, and look at that, it's just enough ammo to pop that cell that I just spawned. Mwah! Absolutely amazing. Now, moving on away from number 5 and on to number 4, we take ourselves to a bit of a pit stop at DPS Central by taking a look at the Heritage in the first in last out slug shotguns. Heritage is gotten from Deepstone Crypt and Philo, which is first in last out, comes from the World Loot Pool. Guys, you know the deal. Slug shotguns are the only shotguns worth using in high-end PvE, and that's just the fact of the matter. They are so insanely strong when it comes to not only burst damage on something like a champion, but sustained DPS over time, especially when used in unison during a damage phase. Heritage with a role like Recombination Reconstruction, and Philo with a role like Auto-Loading Vorpal, and boy oh boy are you sitting on top of the two best shotguns Destiny has to offer. 
You guys don't need a full explanation, slug shotguns are just absolute monsters for damage and DPS, and with how prevalent they are inside of raids like Deep Stone Crypt and Vault of Glass, I definitely had to include them high up on the list. Now, moving on from number 4, of course we're officially in the top 3 territory for the video, so it's time to start talking about some absolute spicy pieces of weaponry. Let's start off with the best hand cannon for PvE Destiny, the 7 Seraph Revolver. This weapon has gotten from the world loot pool and man is it slept on by too many people out there. Although, I absolutely love Fatebringer and I tend to use it more often, it cannot be stated enough just how good this Seraph Revolver is overall, especially when facing some of the hardest content Destiny has to offer. Where this weapon excels is both in its perks and its Warmind Cell capabilities. Unlike the Seraph and Ikelos SMGs, this weapon can make them from much safer distances thanks to range, and unlike the Faithbringer, it doesn't have to rely on specific perks like Firefly to create said cells, just regular kills are all that's needed. Take a look at its god roll, Ambitious Assassin, and Time Payload, you got yourself the king of all legendary PvE hand cannons in your hand. This is all without taking into account the fact that PvE hand cannons will be seeing a damage buff in the future, as confirmed on the Firing Range podcast, so expect this weapon to get even more nutty as time goes on. But yeah, a hand cannon that lets you create Warmind Cells to clear out adds from range and has great perks to keep its damage up to par with your needs? What else could you want from a primary? It literally has everything that you could ask for. Seraph Revolver is by far the best hand cannon in the game for PvE, and if you're sleeping on it, sleep no longer, try to get your hands on a god roll. Now moving on, up next in the number 2 spot, we have ourselves my favorite all time raid weapon in D2, the Succession Sniper from Deep Stone Crypt. Now Succession is everything you could want and more. You want a sniper that's an aggressive frame for more burst damage per shot? Succession is your gun. Want a sniper that's kinetic for good synergy with disruption break and elemental primaries? Succession is your gun. Want a sniper that can hold 8 bullets in the mag and can also roll with Vorpal for really good sustained DPS? Succession is all you need. Go for a god roll like Extended Mag, Reconstruction, Vorpal, or maybe even Lead from Gold Vorpal if ammo is an issue, and you got yourself one of the best snipers Destiny has to offer. Ever since this weapon came out, it was an instant favorite of mine, and it's always my go-to sniper for anything Grandmaster related. I know some of you guys might question why I rank this higher than Heritage and Philo, and it's mainly higher up on the list due to usability. There's far more activities where Succession would be the optimal choice as opposed to the niche situation where Double Slugs are the play. Of course, both are better than each other at certain things depending on what you're doing, but in my opinion for general usability, Succession takes the cake as I can use it in many more activities overall, so I decided to place it up higher on the list. Now, moving on from Succession, here we are. The number one spot for the best weapon inside of Destiny's PvE, and that spot's gonna go to Blinding Nade Grenade Launchers, aka Empty Vessel and Ignition Code. Yeah, I'm not really sure that you guys are all that surprised to be honest. These weapons when fired quite literally keep almost every enemy in the vicinity from attacking you and gives you either time to mop them up or get to cover if you've taken a lot of damage. I made an entire video on blinding nade GLs and it really doesn't get much more overpowered than completely rendering your enemies useless at whatever time you want. Until it does when you factor in that Empty Vessel is a solar weapon, so when combined with Wrath of Rasputin, which only takes one mod energy by the way, you can not only blind enemies, but also create Warmind Cells on any enemies you just so happen to kill. So yeah, it does get a little bit more overpowered. Of course, I also included Ignition Code here at number 1 because it's the only blinding nade kinetic GL that we have right now and this synergizes beautifully with activities that have match game and a ton of elemental shields to the point of making you want to run an elemental primary. But yeah, blinding nade GLs are absolutely no joke. I use these things literally every single day that I play Destiny. I use them in Master Vogue, I use them in Grandmasters, I use them in Day 1 Raids. If I'm playing the hardest activities in the game, I'm always gonna have blinding nades on me. They're just that good. 
If you want to get your hands on either of these weapons, Ignition Code drops from the Override activity this season, and Empty Vessel, just like Royal Entry, is a regular strike chest drop. As far as rolls are concerned, they're mostly up to personal preference, but for Empty Vessel, I'd go with Blinding Nades, Auto Loading, and Disruption, or Vorpal, and for Ignition Code, I'd rock Blinding Nades, Slide Shot, and Vorpal as well. And with all that being said, that's going to conclude today's video on the top 10 best PvE legendary weapons in Destiny's PvE. Well, we had a little bit over 10, but you guys know me, sometimes you just got to leave no stone unturned and cover a little bit of everything. But guys, that's going to do it for me today. This video was quite a long one, but I wanted to make it as good as possible for those of you guys that are watching at home, as whenever you make a video talking about, you know, quote unquote, the best weapons in the game, you gotta make sure that you're bringing the facts with you and the correct information. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of today's video and what your own personal top 10 list is. Of course, this at the end of the day is my own personal opinion, but I tried to make it as objective as possible whenever taken into consideration, you know, what Destiny's in game is all about and what weapons you need to bring to it to properly succeed. This video took absolute ages to make, so a like and subscribe would definitely be appreciated, but guys, Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.